So I'm excited about this video today because we're gonna be talking about something that brings us back to the basics, the number one most used resolution in gaming monitors, which is still 1920 by 1080, the world's most popular resolution today. We're gonna to pay homage to that. And what better monitor to do that with than the Samsung Odyssey G3. It's all new and I have it here on this video. We're gonna be breaking down the specs how well it performs out of the box. We're gonna do some stress tests, game on it, and that's all gonna be in this video coming right up. So I just wanna jump right into it today, you guys. But before I do, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We have about 2% of you guys watching these videos that are subscribed. So go ahead and hit that subscription box down below. And we appreciate all of those who have. We have tons of content on the actual channel, playlist upon playlist, 100 plus videos for you to check out. So we'd appreciate if you went ahead and did that. All right, let's jump into today's video. And I have to say, I've tested this thing out for about two weeks now pretty thoroughly. It's been my primary driver so far. And uh, there's a lot of things I like about it. And there's some things I don't like about it. So we're going to be getting into that. And we'll first start with the actual unboxing, the setup, the menus, and then we're going to get into some gameplay. We're going to be doing some UFO tests to test that uh, pixel overdrive. And then we're going to do some motion testing uh, within some games that I play just like I do in typical fashion. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to wrap it all up by showing you some performance on the Xbox Series S. So spec wise, this guy, of course, is a 27 inch 1920 by 1080 monitor, one millisecond response rate, 144 Hertz refresh rate with a FreeSync premium to boot. I would say that the technology is fairly old, but they have updated it with HDMI 2.0. And with that FreeSync premium, you do get variable refresh rate capability on consoles. So it's a huge benefit for other monitors that may have not been updated since, you know, 2015 through 2019. Now in the box, you get an awesome power cable. You get your display port and your HDMI, which is a nice touch given this is technically a budget monitor. The stand itself is made out of some form of graphite material. It's a little cheap and chintzy, but it holds together well and it has a good solid base. One notable mention is that the power brick actually has a very long cable. It's probably about 10 to 12 feet altogether. So you can really make this reach wherever you want it to. So the general aesthetic is black. They do have a kind of cool look on the back of the monitor itself. And I love the logo it has. It's slim in profile and has a rounded bubble to the back of the actual monitor itself, but it doesn't go above and beyond. And that's okay because it is still a budget style monitor. That being said, it does have some good usable features. Like on the back of the actual stand itself, it has a port for your wire management to pass through. It does tilt and the actual display swivel to your left and right, which is super nice. And last but not least, it does have height adjustment. So if you're interested in IO and you need something to be able to plug your headphones in because you are using console and they don't have an audio out feature, this guy does have a headphone jack. It also has display port. It has VGA just in case you need that VGA connection. And then of course, HDMI in the form of HDMI 2.0. So it is pretty well connected and it will be versatile for anything that you can throw at it. Now, the next thing I have to talk about is the actual menu and setup. And uh, if you're looking for simple and easy and basic, then this is probably the best monitor for you. But this is something I didn't necessarily like. The buttons on the right hand side, there's five of them and they control your menus and your power, kind of your quick access menus. And uh, they're pretty antiquated. So it took me a second to get used to it. Even more so, once you get into the menus, there's not a whole lot of control. For example, your overdrive setting is either on or off. Within certain presets, you don't get access to brightness or contrast. And brightness and contrast are the only settings that you really get within the menu. So it is very basic and simple. That doesn't necessarily mean it didn't perform well. We'll get into that later and I'll tell you my opinion. But if you like to tinker around and calibrate, this probably isn't gonna be the monitor for you because it just lacks the capability to fully get in there and customize what you want. Now let's actually test that overdrive capability in the FreeSync Premium Variable Refresh Rate technology 
we'll go ahead and jump into a little bit of blur busters and see how it goes. Here we are, just kind of testing out the refresh rate and uh, stopping on this first image. What we see is actually pretty good performance all the way from 36 up to 144 frames per second. You know, hey, this should be performing that well. It is a 1920 by 1080 monitor. This technology has been perfected for years. So I expect it to do extremely well. The big question is, is it consistent? One last little stop here. We're seeing a bit of ghosting uh, down in the lower frames. Uh, so it's not as consistent as you might hope, but it's not doing terrible. Again, we're, you know, we're looking at a monitor that's sub $300 for 27 inches. So I'm not upset about this. Quickly here, I'm gonna get into the world motion blur testing here. And uh, top frame is 30 frames per second. Bottom frame is 144 and they're not looking massively different. Definitely that bottom frame is performing better. It's more crisp. We're able to make out the characters just that slight bit better. Let's pause on one more frame here and see if we get any difference. And here we are towards the end here. It is struggling a bit as it's getting more data and having to keep up. Uh, we are seeing a bit of actual motion blur happen here but uh, it's nothing crazy and that is the worst case scenario. So normally what I would do is I would fire up my pixel response rate test and I would go into the menu and test from all the way off all the way to the fastest overdrive setting that we can possibly do. And on this particular monitor, obviously there's just on and off. Just a quick little pause here. We're getting these ghosts, like very small ghosting images. Uh, these UFOs have a black border around them and it's really kind of struggling a bit here with overshoot and ghosting. It's kind of an odd scenario, and I could see this, actually see it with my eyes. I shouldn't be getting this black around the UFOs, uh, and in front of it for that matter. You know, it's interesting because no matter where I pause it, it's kind of the same, it's kind of the same thing. Like a teeny bit of overshoot, teeny bit of ghosting, and you're getting this trail of black behind and in front of the actual UFO. So it's kind of like if you were seeing double, like you would if you had drunk goggles on. It's kind of like that, if I had to explain it. it. Doesn't seem like that overdrive is really the best, to be honest with you. So I don't know if things are like looking up or looking down for this monitor because like I said in the beginning, there's some things that I really like. Like the motion so far has proved to be pretty dang good but the pixel response rate seems to be a little lackluster. But we're about to jump into a bit of gameplay to test it out in a real world scenario. So what I have queued up here is Warzone. And as always, I have a couple interactions I love to go over with you, kind of show you uh, where it performed well and maybe where it didn't. So let's jump into that and check it out. Oh, this, this was a great interaction, you guys. Okay, get my load out and I come back to Nova where everyone's hanging out. And there's a team of three or four, they've taken out half my team and uh, come over here, just freshly loaded, ready to go. I spot them and I call in an airstrike. So I down one of the guys and I make my way around the building because I know they're gonna be going inside to avoid it. And uh, as I'm running around, I drop down and what I see is a guy kind of pop out and I bootstrap this kill, man, because I should have got taken out. But uh, I turn to my right and here I am tracking him down. And as I turn, there is a bit of ghosting, kind of like I expected but it's not like I can't see him. There's not multiple images of him. And here's the money shot. Right here, I'm able to lock onto the target and my motion capability is spot on. Body shots all the way. My teammate comes in to kind of mop up after me. And as he goes down, I'm still getting great quality image here. So later on in that same game, I've made my way over to the harbor area and uh, we're looking to take out another team. So what I do is pull out the sniper because there are a few buildings away and I try to scope in, see if anyone's hanging out at the window. And uh, who do I find is a guy on the bottom floor looking to get sniped. And as my gun recoils, uh, I do see a bit of ghosting, like a little bit harder to track his actual character. And I'm able to recover and I'm able to see his opponent in the actual window right above him. Aim down sights, well I stayed aim down sights and get another shot off at his opponent. This is kind of far away on the map, but I'm still able to clearly make out him and his opponent in this interaction. So 
this monitor has not failed me so far in this Warzone game. So here's another sticky interaction for you. This one's a little rough, but there's a lot of motion going on. And uh, I thought it was actually very helpful because it shows how motion capability and pixel response rate of this monitor, as bad as it has been in some of the synthetic bench tests, has actually served me well here. This picture sums it all up. This guy's jumping around like crazy. This happens in two seconds flat. I bust into this house. This guy thinks he's gonna, you know, surprise me with his little attack. He comes jumping out of the freaking door. And uh, next thing you know, he's all over the screen and I'm just hip firing. And I happen to make out his character. I'm able to lock on, even though he's jumping around all crazy like, break his armor and uh, take him out from here. So testing out the color, my favorite game, real world performance is Borderlands 3. A lot of contrast, a lot of neon style colors, good saturation in the colors, and there's a good amount of detail in the actual artwork. So normally what I do is I fire this up and I do a bit of a calibration, but because this monitor doesn't really allow for a full calibration, I'm just in first person shooter preset. And of course the overdrive is on and I am running variable refresh rate through the FreeSync Premium. And I can't say the picture quality is phenomenal, but I also can't say it's terrible. The viewing angles are pretty good, especially as I sit here and I look from the side, I can make out a good amount of the actual character in the color itself. But here's where one of the downsides of this monitor comes in. There aren't advanced calibration menus within the system. So if you find a game that doesn't really look good based off the presets, all you can really control is the brightness and the contrast. Now there are some other subset menus, but it's not a lot. And I wanna stress that because again, if you like to calibrate your games, you're not gonna be extremely happy with this monitor. But the monitor itself isn't crushing any detail too bad. As we get into a bit of a darker scene here, I'm still able to make out some of the detail in these rocks in the, in the background. And uh, the darker parts of my character, I can still make out pretty well. Getting into some gameplay on Athena's here, I wanna check out how well this holds up during actual playthrough. And uh, what I notice here is we do get a bit of this kind of haloing effect. You get a bit of that glow up by the border, the frame of the actual monitor, where up here you can see the blue light actually coming out of the panel and creating this glow. But you can see that blue is almost taking over this entire image. Everything has a blue filter over it. And just pausing on some of these interactions here, we are seeing a bit of motion blur on the actual characters and the map around it just makes it a little more difficult to actually make out what's around you, but it's not like I'm seeing double or triple of anything in front of me. So it's performing to be expected or as I should expect for a monitor like this. And just a last pause here as I'm fighting this main guy here, the big boss, the heavyweight. He jumps at me, takes a lunge. As he lands, I pause. There's not really any ghosting or artifacting, anything funky going on here. It's still looking pretty solid. We are getting a bit of glow around the edges still, but uh, overall the motion handling's good. The color's not bad. It's not oversaturated. I will give it that. It is not oversaturated. For under $300, the Samsung Odyssey G3 is lacking a few things. It's not perfect. It is a budget style monitor and don't forget that. The Odyssey bears a phenomenal name and has great credibility because of the G5, G7, and G9. But do not mistake this G3 for that. You will lose some features and some capability when you get it. So we do have a couple things to go over. Still, I'm gonna jump into the Xbox Series S and how well I think it performed and then we'll wrap up the video. All right, so this guy was pretty plug and play. Again, it has that HDMI 2.0 feature. It has the FreeSync Premium. So when you go into the actual video settings of the Xbox, you'll notice that you're going to be able to allow 1080p 120 hertz with variable refresh rate. And then it will unlock that 120 hertz mode in games that are compatible with 120 hertz mode. Not every single game is out there. Now it's a non HDR panel. So you will not be able to get 10 bit color, HDR, HDR 10 gameplay, anything like that. So this won't be the monitor if you're looking for HDR content, this is not the one for you. Now, once I did get it dialed in, there were some good interactions in Call of Duty Cold War. I played multiplayer because that is for sure a 120 FPS game. And uh, like I said before, it kind of has this hidden feature that's not really 
baked into the cake. You know, there's not like an on off button, but when you play, you just connect. You connect with the opponent that you're looking for. Your shots are precise, they're on point. And uh, no matter how much blur you might see in the world or the map, you're actually never gonna see that down sight. And uh, this thing performed extremely well. So in this interaction here, I'm tracking down one of my opponents. Again, playing the Series S Cold War multiplayer. And as I'm going through the gas station here, there's a teeny bit of motion blur. You can see double images of certain items. But as I round the corner, I see this guy kind of peeking his head out, take a couple shots at him, and then I duck back into the building because I know he's going to be there. This is all happening pretty fast. So I turn back in, I see him, I aim down sights, and I go to take him out and I get some good body shots on him and he's out super fast. But when I lock on a target and I aim down sights, I'm not getting that crazy motion blur that's happening as I'm running through the map. And uh, that could pretty much be said about any interaction that I had on this monitor, whether it was from a distance or whether it was closer up the interactions I had were consistent with PC gaming. Now, the fidelity wasn't the same, the frames per second weren't the same, the overall quality wasn't the same because it is the Series S. But at 1080p, the Series S is a beast and uh, I think well worth the $299 that you pay for it and stacks up to any 1080p gaming machine for this monitor. You know, you can only push the boundary so far with the monitor that you have and I think the Series S caps it out in its performance very nicely that and that's the end of my testing you guys now i do want to go over a couple things to end the video some positives some negatives uh, but i want to discuss something first and previously on the channel the hp 25x kind of had the top spot for that budget 1080p gaming monitor so if you wanted to go buy something that was inexpensive but have a good experience that was the one i would recommend now i'm still kind of making my decision and i'll talk you through it but I think, I think this Odyssey G3 takes its place. And let me tell you why. All right, starting with the downsides. The first is absolutely gonna be the menus. The lack of control that you get within the menus is a bit upsetting. I wish there was a bit more to be had there and uh, hopefully Samsung fixes that on future models. The second is gonna be that pixel response rate test. Now, I don't know if it truly affected me in game as much as it did on the synthetic test from ufotest.com, but on ufotest.com, it showed some pretty bad and alarming scores, which made me really concerned if I'm super picky about my pixel response rate. And the fact that it only has overdrive on or overdrive off doesn't let me dial that into the game that I'm playing or the content that I have. But there are some definite upsides, and the first that I'm gonna talk about is absolutely going to be the motion capability of this monitor. The motion handling was phenomenal. Like I showed you in those breakdowns, both on the Series S and during gameplay on Warzone with the PC, it performed extremely well in those high stress scenarios where I had to maneuver all over the place. Once again, console or PC, it performed really well in those areas. The second benefit is going to be size for the money. At under $300, you get a 27 inch display. And even though it's only 1080p resolution, I didn't really notice that it was stretching out the picture too far. I think 27 is about as big as you can get, but it performed well under those circumstances. Don't expect anything that's like pristine, but you will get a good resolution, good fidelity out of this monitor for its size. Now the third and arguably probably the best pro about it is that it is an updated 2021 model, which means it comes with HDMI 2.0 and FreeSync Premium, and it's technically console ready. So if you wanna be able to do variable refresh rate on console, you wanna be able to utilize it on an actual FreeSync card, any AMD card out there, you're gonna get full compatibility with it, whether you're using DisplayPort, or you're using HDMI. I could really talk all day about budget monitors. They're exciting. It's good to see the technology that trickles down year over year from you know the top generation models all the way down. And this has received some, not all of it, but I have to tell you that it had that kind of it factor, that, that thing that sucked me in to when I was playing video games, I was extremely happy with the performance overall. And I couldn't explain to you exactly what that is, 
But at the end of the day, I did better in game using the Samsung Odyssey G3 than I did the HP 25X. Therefore, it takes the top spot on my channel for my recommended budget monitor under $300. And I guarantee you over the next six months, it's going to go on sale at $200, $229, something in that price point to make it worthwhile to buy. So save the item somewhere on your list, whether it's Best Buy or Amazon or on uh, samsung.com, save it somewhere, keep an eye on the price. Uh, or if you just want to buy it, buy it. But I'll put a link down below for you to check out. If you have any questions about the monitor whatsoever, you can ask below in the comments. We also have an awesome Facebook group called Only Nerds by Texessory. You can join that group if you'd like. There's long form discussion happening there and a lot of people that participate. The group's growing fast, so I invite you to go check it out. Otherwise, you guys, as always, I'll catch you in the next video.